recording is started. I'm also starting the recording. All right. All right. So Anusha and Sahib, before we start, do you have any questions for me? All right. All right. So, okay. Okay. So, all right. So, yesterday we talked a um, uh, little about R and a little about data analytics. So, basically, right now we are talking about our usual analytics not big data analytics we talked about big data and now we are talking about usual analytics okay so we will go slowly slowly into the higher end and then we will go a little more deeper into into what we what we want to achieve okay so a little about uh, let me let me just go through all right so i'll just go through a couple of slides to give you an idea okay so again I, although i have talked about this earlier also to keep the whole landscape clear i would like to re repeat what 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 we want to achieve so for example what tool will you use to compute the average of these three values 3 20 and 4 yeah sahib and uh, so you just have to tell me the tool anusha correct we will just use pen and paper okay or sometimes not even the pen and paper okay so pen and paper or whiteboard you can just compute so this problem the problem of computing the average is a data analytics problem where volume is very small and variety is very small variety means the complexity okay now what tool will you use to compute the average of data having 400 records? Okay, Anusha, what about you? yeah so if you have want to compute average of say 400 numbers average value and how do you compute sum up all the numbers and divide by total numbers correct so sahib says excel very good all right so here the volume has little increased but variety has not changed as in variety when i say it means the complexity of the problem okay so in these cases the tools like excel will be used now you got to compute the average of 10000 numbers or 10000 records out of which you have to pick up a column and find the average of those records so what tool will you use all right sahib says he will use sas okay so you could actually use sas sql or r okay so you could use things like sas sql and r for this kind of problems okay Because Excel uh, cannot handle 10,000 records so easily. It will give us a lot of errors. And I think newer versions are still able to handle. 
so you can see that the i'm moving the point towards the the, uh, 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 the as the volume is increasing the point is moving now what tool will you use if you have to compute the average of average of 10 billion records 10 billion records yes we just have to compute the average of 10 billion records we don't want it real time we don't want anything we just want to compute the average of these many numbers okay okay good answer uh, uh, sahib so we could go for things like map reduce or similar thing as in hive but under the hood it's going to use map reduce anyway or uh, spark r or spark map reduce okay so we in a sense we cannot do the average of 10 billion records in a reasonable amount of time without distributed computing okay reason being as the data changes the limitations of various uh, components of a computer becomes uh, becomes bottleneck all right sounds uh, sounds uh, good to you now let's move to another dimension what if you have to compute the average number of visitors on a very high traffic website what will you use if you have to compute if you, you what would you use to compute the average number of visitors per second on a very high traffic website Yes, I have. Good, good. So you will use either Storm or you will use Spark, Spark Streaming, Spark Streaming, and maybe a custom solution. All right. So yes. So the, the, when we talk like this, then the third dimension in which the big data moves, we are moving into the velocity. You can see that in this plane. So the data is not that big, but the velocity is big. Okay. Or we could use, so we cannot use Flume for this. Flume is just to transfer the data. Doing the computation using Flume is actually pretty difficult. Okay. And the example which we gave yesterday regarding Flume, basically there Flume was being used only to transport data from multiple different places to a single place. Okay. All right. All right. Now moving ahead. Now let's say, now let me just try to change. Let me just try to change the problem into different example so you are given year as in 2010 the salary was 10000 2011 salary was 11000 2012 salary was 12000 to predict the salary in 2013 what will you require what tool will you use to predict salary in 2013 okay good good point uh, sahab sahab's point is that it's direct assumption good all right yes so basically again even though our variety has changed but the problem statement is simple and therefore we can do it using pen and paper. Now imagine that, imagine that you are given 
x and y like this okay now what tool will you use to compute the value of y when x becomes 7 yes so in this you are given values of x and y and uh, if x becomes 7 what will be the value of y okay good good so sahib says that he will use graph and excel what if there is no straight line that is coming out of this data you draw it and there is no straight correlation then if you try to plot it using our yesterday's uh, mechanism then you will know what we are talking about all right so yes we can use to solve these kind of problems we cannot do it using direct uh, without any tool we might have to use a graph paper as excel is uh, as uh, sahib is suggesting or an excel sheet in which we will use a technique called linear regression what do we do in linear regression we put the data on the graph we draw a line a closest line which goes through all the points okay sometimes a line line may not be passing through all the points but it will be it will try to keep itself very very close okay so you can you can always imagine when we talk about linear regression is that the that there is a point here there's a point here there's a point here there's a point here then there is a point here then there is one point here and there's one point here and there's one point here and here so even though there is so we will try all kinds of lines through this let's say this is uh sorry let me try can i can i draw okay you see that so this is one way of drawing a line this could be we could draw a line like this 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 and we could draw a line like this or like this okay and then how do we know as a technique that which line is best okay so we'll compute the standard deviation as in sum up the delta sum up the difference between the point and the line the real and the actual so we will compute the delta and sum it up by squaring a and then see who's who's del uh, who, which one is smallest and the one that is smallest will generally be like this you can see so so this technique is called linear regression now once given some value of x we can simply project on on this line we could simply say okay so this sorry let me just delete it okay so uh, for this x value we can say okay the value of y is this here okay so this is our prediction so given a value of x we should be able to predict y okay so this technique is called linear regression we will solve two three problems of linear regression as we go forward using r okay so this this particular session is very very important and i want to warn you that it might require you to go through a lot of things and it might be a little more stressful for you okay and in case you are not able to try out let me know so that i can have a little more 
yeah, I can I can help you out a little more. Okay, so yeah Because this is a very important topic because the rest of the things are trying to solve these problems by the way of various tools okay so anyway coming back to the the tools and techniques now imagine this in the previous problem we had only x and y what if we have three values x y and z now when you have x y and z that means you cannot draw a graph like that you will have to draw some curve some kind of surface you have to draw in 3d space and what if you have 4d space as in four dimensions what if you have n number of dimensions how will you solve the problem like this now the complexity of the problem is increasing although the data is small so imagine that you are you you are a uh, analyst at um, at a crude oil factory as in as a at a refinery okay and re at refinery you are given all the variables of maybe one day okay or maybe you are given uh, variables for a couple of days okay now what you are given is the flow rate, the input temperature, the pressure, the date, the en environment uh, temperature, and then the output pressure, uh, output, the output of the refinery. So, of course, the output of the refinery will depend upon these variables. Sometimes it may be that the output does not depend on, say, environmental temperature. But that's a role of data analyst to come up with the idea. And although at this point of time, when we talk about these kind of complex problems, the role of data scientist and a data analyst kind of overlaps. Okay. So when you are given these kind of values, what tool are you going to use? You can see that now the variety has increased, though the volume is still small. What tool are you going to use to compute this? So given, uh, sorry, here it is supposed to be 10,000 records. Okay, given 10,000 such records, what tool are you going to use to predict the output given these values? What is it that you're going to use? Yes.